I finally made a YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, welcome. And for my first video, I decided to do something fun, but also food related. So for this video, I recorded what I ate. I cooked for five days straight. So hopefully you'll have a nice collection of recipes by the end of it. And I hope you enjoy it. First, tenderize the pork with the back of your knife, then cut it into thin slivers. Add minced garlic, cornstarch, sake, soy sauce, ground white pepper and water, and mix it all up. Now heat a frying pan on high with vegetable oil, and once hot, add the marinated pork in one layer. Try not to move it for a few minutes, then flip to the other side and finish cooking until no longer pink. Now add the mustard tuber directly from the pack. I get mine from Yummy House and Saying Pun. Now add the pre-mixed sauce that you made earlier, and just stir fry for a bit. Adjust seasoning as needed. Once the sauce reaches a really thick consistency, it's done. Enjoy it with some plain steamed rice because the flavors are quite, um, quite punchy because of the mustard tuber and the soy sauce. So it balances really well with plain rice. Enjoy! This is honestly one of my favorite snacks using leftover rice. So just take some leftover rice and mix it with sesame oil and seeds if you have them. Um, and for the meat, I like to use either bacon or spam, but for this one, I'm going to use spam. Just cut it up into cubes and adjust the portion depending on how much rice you have. Now fry it up, make it crunchy and golden, then add the sesame oil infused rice that you made earlier. Now mix it together. Now add a glob of gochujang chili paste, add some fish sauce, some light soy sauce, and minced kimchi. Now fry on high heat for some crunchiness and it's done. Sometimes I like to put a fried egg on it. It just makes it perfect. But today I'm lazy, so I didn't do that. So this is a really good and easy dinner idea because the hardest part is really just cutting up the ingredients and you can't go wrong unless you add too much sauce or something. So just cut up the garlic, the ginger, shallots, the de-seeded red chilies, long beans, and of course remember to wash and pick the Thai basil as well. So these are the long beans, I got them at the wet market in Central. Done! Also FYI, I'm using two packs of 300 grams of minced pork because we eat a lot. Now heat up some vegetable oil on medium heat and fry all the things you cut up earlier. Remember not to let the garlic burn, and once the long beans have softened, add the minced pork on high heat. Try to simultaneously break up the pork while flattening it into a single layer and just sort of leave it there for a few minutes to let one side turn golden, and then flip it and mix it. So now once all the pork pieces have cooked, add the sauce that you made earlier and just mix it up. Then add the Thai basil and let the leaves wilt as you stir it. And then it's done. Now serve it with some jasmine rice and a fried egg on top. Now here's a pasta recipe that Italians might hate me for, but trust me, it's really good. First, create a spice mix like I'm doing here. This is going to be a dry rub for the chicken. I'm using oregano, thyme, garlic powder, basil, curry powder, cumin seeds, chili peppers, mixed herbs, salt, and pepper. You can adjust it how you want. Crush and mince some garlic and set it aside for later. So basically, John eats a lot, so I tend to make a lot more than the normal standard portions. So I'm using four chicken breasts, even though the recipe usually calls for two, and I'm tenderizing it and then cutting it into halves, so butterfly it. Now take all the breast halves and put it into a bowl and douse it with some olive oil so it makes it easier for the dry rub to stick. Mix in the dry rub, add some salt as you need, and mix, mix, mix. I'm using a Dutch oven, but any heavy set pan should work for this. 
heat up some oil and fry the chicken breasts on each side until they're golden. And just keep doing this in batches. I actually think that it might taste better if you coated it in flour and just created a sort of like crispier crust on the chicken, but that's up to you. When you get to the final chickens, just add the garlic in. Since the bottom got all crusty, I added some chicken broth to, what's the word for when you like scrape off the bottom burnt bits? Anyway, do that and then add back all of the chicken breast halves and just stir it around for a bit and add a pre-made tomato sauce. Mix it up and try to cover the chicken with the tomato sauce. Now cover and leave it on low heat. Now it should look like this and smell amazing. Now add mozzarella cheese and try to be generous with it because you want it to be super cheesy. The sauce should thicken a little bit and when you sort of mix it, you'll see the cheese strands melting and creating this amazing texture in the sauce. Now this is your sauce done. Boil some pasta but don't cook it all the way. Add it directly into your sauce and let it cook all the way in there. Add a spoonful of the pasta water into the sauce, mix, then serve. If you have it, try to use fresh Parmesan cheese. The chicken should be so tender that when you put your fork in it, it just flakes off. Now for the easiest recipe of them all. For the oxtail, I recommend you to leave it in a pot of cold water for one or two hours before you cook it, um, just to let the blood seep out. You can also blanch it in boiling water to let the impurities come out there too. Here I'm just cutting up the leek and combining it with the chopped Japanese radish. Like so. Don't mince the garlic, just sort of smash it into big pieces and add it in with the rest. Here I'm cleaning the oxtails by adding the oxtails into boiling water for a few minutes and throwing out the dirty water. Now reboil the cleaned oxtails with new water and bring it down to a simmer. Add salt and white pepper, add in the veggies and just let it all cook together. And remember to scoop up the impurities that float to the top. After three hours, this is how much fat I scooped. Remember to keep tasting the dish and to add more salt and pepper if needed. Now serve it with white rice, kimchi rice, or Korean dumplings, and you're done.